There are many household brands in the luxury industry, but few of them compare to the esteemed luxury giant named Louis Vuitton. Launched in 1854, Louis Vuitton has spent many decades since then building a global presence in the luxury industry. The company employs over 140,000 people across its 460 stores in 50 countries across the globe. In 2021, Louis Vuitton's brand value stood at 14.86 billion dollars. But things weren't always rosy for this company. In fact, Louis Vuitton has survived many setbacks since it was formed. Born in Paris in the 19th century, the company has survived economic depressions and even wars to get where it is today. But all of this started with a young man named Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton was born on the 4th of August in 1821 in the Jura region in eastern France. He came from a family of craftsmen, which included artisans and farmers. His father, Javier Vuitton, was a farmer, while his mother, Corinne Galliard, was a local hat maker. Growing up, Louis worked on the farm alongside his father, Javier, and Louis experienced his first major tragedy when he was 10 years old. His mother passed away, and soon enough, only his father remained. Unfortunately for Louis, he didn't have a good relationship with his stepmother. According to Louis, his stepmother often treated him very badly. And sadly enough, tragedy returned for Louis. This time, his father passed away, leaving him alone with his stepmother. Louis, who was already bored of life at home, was fed up with living with his stepmother. And so when his father died, Louis made a very big decision, one that would set him on a different path in his life. In the spring of 1835, a young Louis, who was only 13 at the time, left home for Paris. He set out on foot and would walk an impressive 292 miles to his destination. Having no money, Louis had to take menial jobs along the way so he could take care of himself. Most of these menial jobs included working with craftsmen and artisans. And these jobs gave him valuable experience in working with materials like metals and fabrics and wood and stone. Louis finally arrived in Paris in 1837. Now 16 years old, Louis found employment as an apprentice of a man named Monsieur Marcal, who was a successful box maker and packer. At the time, box making was a sophisticated and well-respected craft. Most box makers attended to the wealthy class by loading and unloading custom-made boxes for them. Louis worked very hard at his craft, and after years of working with Monsieur Marcal, Louis became a popular box maker in the city. For the next 16 years, Louis continued to get better at his craft, and one day, he would be recognized for his excellence and quality craftsmanship. On the 2nd of December in 1851, something major happened. Napoleon Bonaparte staged a coup d'etat. A year later, he took the name Napoleon III as he became Emperor of France. Napoleon soon re-established the French Empire, and that proved to be Vuitton's lucky break. Napoleon's wife, Eugenie de Montijo, employed Louis Vuitton as her personal box packer and maker. She gave him one simple charge to pack the most beautiful clothes in an exquisite way. For Louis Vuitton, working for the emperor's wife was his access to the elite and royal class of France. The connection with the wealthy class of France would continue to bring him lots of opportunities for the rest of his life. The year 1854 was a major one in Louis's life. That year, he found the love of his life, a beautiful 17-year-old Clemence Emily Paria. Louis and Clemence got married on the 22nd of April in 1851. Shortly after his marriage, Louis resigned his position at Monsieur Marcal's shop. He then opened his own box making and packing shop and the shop had a rather unique sign. Securely packs the most fragile objects, specializes in packing fashions. The business was fair to Louis. However, he wanted to be great. Growing up in relative poverty, he learned the value of hard work and perseverance, and now it was time to combine all that he learned into his own shop. In the late 1850s, most standard luggage boxes were made from leather and they featured a round top. The round top boxes allowed water to run off easily, however, it made stowage inconvenient. Louis then introduced his first innovation to luxury luggage. Louis introduced a trunk with a flat top design. The flat top allowed for easy stacking of the boxes. He also made the boxes waterproof by using leather to make the boxes. 
The trunks became an instant success as the rapid technological advances in transportation increased the expansion of travel. This caused the demand of Louis Vuitton's luggage to skyrocket, and this soon made his shop too small and unable to meet up with the rising demand of his products. In 1859, Louis Vuitton moved his company into a new office at Ansure sur seine northeast of Paris. At that time, he employed only 20 people. Business was huge. Louis Vuitton was receiving orders from the elite and royal class of France, as well as orders from Khedive of Egypt. In 1867, Louis Vuitton had a new product offering, modern luxury handbags, and this new product was targeted to women. The bags became a must-have for high-class French women, and soon, the demand for his luxury bags was rising by the day. Unfortunately for Louis Vuitton, tragedy was about to strike. Louis came from a life of poverty. He left home for Paris at age 13, reached Paris at age 16. He then worked his way up from a box maker apprentice up to becoming his own boss and owning his own box making shop. Now business was beginning to look favorable for Louis Vuitton. Increased demand meant that they had to move the company into a new office space. Now they had just completed their move, but as life would have it, tragedy would soon strike. At that time, Tensions between Prussia and France were already brewing. Prussia was against Prince Leopold of Hohenzollern Sigmaringen's candidacy for the Spanish throne. The tensions came to a head when the King of Prussia sent a controversial letter named the Erms Telegram of the Minister of Prussia. The letter caused France to declare war on Prussia, and that kick-started the Franco-Prussian War. By 1871, Louis Vuitton had to close its businesses. The Franco-Prussian War had terribly reduced demand for its luxury bags and its luggage. Even worse, the war soon led to a siege in Paris. Things got worse as a bloody civil war erupted in France and ravaged the French Empire. By the time the siege ended on January 28, 1871, most of the damage had been done. Louis Vuitton returned after the war to find his village destroyed along most of his equipment. His shop had been destroyed and most of his workers had been dispersed by the war. And for Louis Vuitton, he had to rebuild his family's business. The war devastated France, causing many to lose their homes and their livelihood. Louis was no exception. His home and business that he built over a decade ago had been destroyed. Even worse for Louis, his longtime patron, the Empress of France, had now been exiled after her husband had been kicked out of power by Prussia's victory. Louis, however, had a diehard spirit. Just like Louis devoted himself to moving to France at the age of 13, he was now devoted to rebuilding his family business. Fortunately for Louis Vuitton, the war had crashed real estate prices, and that meant that opening a new shop in the upscale parts of Paris wouldn't cost him too much. Within some months, Louis had opened a new shop. His new shop was located at One Rue Scribe near a famous jockey club in Paris. It was going to be difficult, but Louis was prepared for the challenge. By 1872, Louis Vuitton was becoming popular again. The company created a new stripe pattern logo for his luggage. The aim of the design was to help protect Louis Vuitton against any duplication of his look. The new logo soon became a symbol of class that made people stand out in society. This redesign helped boost Louis Vuitton sales. Soon enough, the company was growing well enough to consider going international. 13 years after rebuilding his company, Louis Vuitton opened its first store in the UK. The store was on Oxford Street in London. Louis, who was now old, decided it was time to involve his son, Jorge, in the family business. In 1886, under the direction of Jorge, Louis Vuitton redesigned the lock system on their luggage. The new lock system, which was designed to protect trunks from burglars, was so successful that the company then patented the design. Unfortunately for Louis Vuitton, the new design didn't protect their look as it is still being duplicated. Louis decided to switch up the company's logo again. This time, Vuitton created a dimer canvas pattern which remained with the company ever since. Everything seemed to be on the up and up for Louis Vuitton until tragedy struck in 1892 when he died at the age of 70. His son then took charge of the business and he didn't rest on his laurels. Jorge attended the World Fair in Chicago and while there, he met a famous businessman named John Wanamaker, the person responsible for introducing department stores and price tags. 
Jorge and John Wanamaker reached an agreement to sell Louis Vuitton bags at Wanamaker's stores, and Jorge then honored his father by creating a LV monogram and floral pattern. Jorge was personally responsible for establishing a solid distribution network in the United States. And after his death in 1936, the business was passed down to Jorge's son, Gaston. Gaston also passed down the business down to his sons and who then passed down their empire to their sister's husband, Henry Rackemeyer. Rackemeyer did a wonderful job at Louis Vuitton and he established several stores across the globe. In 1856, the company made almost a billion dollars in sales. The company then merged with Moet Hennessy to form LVMH. Today, Louis Vuitton has a market value of over $14 billion. The story of Louis Vuitton is the typical business fairy tale. A young man born in poverty leaves his home to search for greener pastures, finds a job where he struggles to make ends meet. He works very hard until one day he decides to do his own thing, and as they say, the rest is history. If anything, Louis Vuitton teaches us the power of hard work and perseverance, and Louis determined to get to Paris, and he worked at menial jobs just to get him there. If you want to know more personal stories about the lives of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, subscribe to our channel so you'll always stay up to date with the latest releases.